We honor you, Jesus. Hallelujah to your name, Father. Hallelujah, Jesus. Father God, we're expecting so much greatness in this house today, oh God. Father God, we bask in your glory today, oh God. We bask in your anointing, Jesus. Fill us up, oh God. Fill us up, oh God. Fill us up, oh God. Fill this atmosphere with your love, Lord Jesus. Fill it with your power, Lord. Fill it with your anointing, Jesus. Devil, you don't have any authority in this house. This is holy ground. Everything that is not of you is cast out in the name of Jesus. Bless your name, oh God. Freedom to worship. Freedom to lift our hands and give you all the glory that is due unto your name. Bless your name, oh God. Bless your name, Jesus reign in this house today lord reign in this house today lord reign in this house oh god father god we pray for the praise team right now oh god decrease oh god in them and you increase oh god father god give them the mind of you oh god give them the mind of you jesus father god we pray for the musicians right now oh god father god may they play skillfully unto you oh god father we bless you right now lord god we bless you, Jesus. Worthy is your name, O oh God. We pray for the man servant of God who's going to bring forth your word, O oh God. Touch him afresh, O oh God. Touch him from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet, O oh God. Thank you for bringing them back safely, O oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, we bless you, O oh God. We praise you, God. Open up your mouth, people Hallelujah. of God. Open up your mouth and give him God's praise, oh God. Bless your name, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Jesus, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. We bless you, God. We bless you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We bless you, God. Holy is your name, oh God. Holy is your name, Father. We worship you, Jesus. Worship you, God. A freshman, oh God. A freshman, Jesus. Glory to God. A freshman, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Freshman, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Bless your name. Hallelujah, Jesus. We bless you, Jesus. Hallelujah.
Come on, let's go ahead and worship him in this house. Come on, put those hands together. Open up your mouths and give God glory. Let us sing, hallelujah to the King. 
Do it again. He He's my God. Sing it. He's my God. He's my God.
great. challenge you just to lift your hands and say one more time sing how great how great how great how great how great is our God sing with me about 40 seconds just tell him how great he is come on come on lift your voice and tell him how great he is come on lift your voice tell him how great he is the name above all names, worthy of our praise.
God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Father, we bless you today. We glorify your name today. Hallelujah. We don't celebrate the works of the enemy. But the truth is that there are many persons presently, presently under attack even now. I got a word from, for the Lord from you. The Lord of God declares this. He says, when the enemy comes in against you like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. And I'm telling you, a standard is being lifted. I know you think that it can't get no worse, but I'm promising you, had it not been for the hand of God on your life, you would have been consumed. And some of you are struggling trying to find something to give God praise for. I'm telling you, man, if the enemy was able to do with you the things that he had planned on doing with you, you would have been a whole lot worse right now. Had it not been for the my Above all me, worthy of all I pray, mighty are the works of your hand, mighty are the works of your hand, mighty are the works of your hand. This break, I want you just to take about five seconds. So before you do it, before you do it, hear me out first. I want you to give God praise for what he protected you from over the next, come on, take about 10 seconds and just give God a praise right here for the things he protected you from. Things that you didn't even know was going on, but he protected you. No, come on here. tell you this I am um, I was scared for this morning I was scared for this morning um, you know some of us preachers lie we just lie and say we were on sabbatical this week I was not on sabbatical I was on vacation sabbatical means spend time before God and praying and seeking God no I was on vacation I did pray but um, I was on vacation uh, I was eating glory to God uh, thanks, thanks, thanks. I was on vacation. I, I, this is the first trip for the year that I had to preach like that. Um, and so we, we are on vacation this week. So I wasn't on no sabbatical. Um, but while there, though, and for those of you that didn't know I was there and, and stayed and, and, and came to church on Tuesday, uh, God bless you, the rest of y'all. I, I heard a lot of y'all stayed home Tuesday. I heard a lot of y'all stayed. I don't know how the word got out. Somehow the word got out because a lot, a lot. A lot of folks stayed home. Mo Moby hold it down here. I am Moby hold it down on, on Tuesday. Yeah, yeah. You see why half of them ain't clapping they ain't being. That's why they can't clap. I can watch the video. I can I couldn't get the internet wasn't clear on the ship, so I couldn't watch it, but I can watch it when I get home. I can see who all being and I can I can call you personally and I can embarrass you. I put your name on the screen next Sunday. I ain't doing it Tuesday, do it Sunday morning, put your name on the screen. These are those who are not out on Tuesday night. Uh, but I, I heard it was a mighty move of God that, that uh, Mopi and Richard, them, they handled it down, hold it down, Dwayne preach, and everybody had a wonderful time. Uh, <laughs> no, no, Dwayne preach. I, I know, I know Dwayne. <laughs> I, I, know, I know what I say. I know just what I say. Um, um, but listen, while we were off, man, while we were off, and, and that's why I had a pre precursor by saying that I wasn't, on I wasn't on sabbatical, I was on vacation. But boy, listen to me, man. God was speaking. God was speaking so clearly. Um, uh, but let me say this also to you that 
I have to leave here um, in another hour or so because I got a service starting at 10 30 and I'm preaching too. Don't tell them I'm here. Um, yeah, I got to preach somewhere else um, soon directly. Um, so I can, I can zip out. I ain't getting on the sabbatical. I just can't preach somewhere. All right. And um, um, so I'll be here on Tuesday because y'all, y'all play crazy. I'll be here on Tuesday. I ain't getting away. I just got to go to another church to preach. Um, so I'm going to preach here. I, so I, I was scared because I said, God, how I can finish preaching at 11 30 after being away for a week? I've been in life with Santa for seven days. That's a long time not to be in life. And then for God to have said so many things over this past week, I'm going to tell you one of the things that he said. And, and I can't say the rest because I ain't, we ain't going to leave it at 2 o'clock like regular. Um, and I can't afford that. I got I to gotta get out of here. Um, the man of God said to me, he said, he said man, you, you, man um, Roll, I really need you there by 11.30. I said, bloody dang, I happen. Um, but I can do my best to be there by quarter to 12. Uh, but God said this to me. He reminded me of the scripture that says... No one shut up a Kosia. No one that gives up house, land, job, opportunities for my sake will not in this life and the life to come receive 100 fold. Now, because we are a people that never want to throw things in God's face, we are, we are very careful how we approach God. I heard God say to me this week, he says, son, you ain't got to be afraid to tell me that you gave up stuff for me. Because you would never tell God that because you don't ever want to see him as though you, 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 won't, you can't go in God's face demanding nothing because everything you have has been given you by God. And so you would never do that. So God says to me, son, be free. You could go ahead and tell me. You could remind me of what you gave up for me because I have a promise to fulfill. Oh, man. And, and, and the next part, I lost my voice on the cruise. I got horse. I wasn't drinking rum. You know, when you drink plenty of rum, you just get horse. I wasn't drinking. I, was, I don't know how it happened. I don't know how it happened. I got horse. I ain't drink. I promise you all. Like that. I, <laughs> I, I wasn't drinking. Ah. Uh, ah? Uh, that's what Timmy them tell me when you drink his get horse. <laughs> Timmy told me when you drink his get horse. I don't know that. So when you drink, you get horse. But I go horse. I, John, I wasn't drinking. I just get horse. Breeze, draft. Um, and, um, but I feel like hollering, boy. Because God says, he says, Denzel, this word for you, but it's also for, you, for life. I've been hearing all my life. Payday is coming after a while. God said, announce when you get back. That payday is here. I ain't got the voice this morning to push you to shout. So if you're waiting for me to prime you, you're going to miss it this morning. I'm going to say it one more time. God says, tell life with him, Santa. You ain't got to sing that song no more. Payday is coming. He says, make a declaration in the house this morning that payday is here. Tell my people to expect it any day. Glory be to God. I can tell you this, listen here. Two weeks ago, the word of God came to came to Sister Carolyn, I can call her name, came to her, and the word of God, her words, listen, man, your time of favor is here. God has seen your labor, God has seen your toil, and said, and the word of God was clear to it says that you're gonna find yourself in the supermarket and folks will come to you and just give you envelopes. Oh 
with money on it she came to me last week sunday after church and said pastor denzel you wouldn't believe that these parents ran me down placed a white envelope in my hand and said you taught all my children that was the word said you taught all three of my children and i was trying to find you i went to your school to find you but you weren't there no more i ran you down to get this envelope to you and i'm telling you payday is not coming Alright, I I never never shit over that. Uh-huh. Glory to God. I was um I there I there on 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 sabbatical on vacation. You know, on vacation there. And when I got to the emails, got an email, and someone emailed me and says, um, I need, I, I've been here in Nassau all this time, and then somebody emailed me, emailed my office, um, my engineering office. They spoke to my secretary. <laughs> Mobile office, yeah. Uh, and they spoke to the secretary, and, and the secretary told him I was out of town. And they said, I need him to call me as soon as he gets back, because we got one major project that's about to start now. And I need him on this project. Wow. Call somebody else. They said, listen, man, Denzel, when you're getting back, we got two things starting up that I need. I need you on right now. Listen, now, some of y'all got a spirit of jealousy that y'all don't know how to celebrate. And y'all, some of y'all, 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 y'all still, I've been, I've been saying in this church for the last four years that this church operates on the funds principle. Yes. I yes. told y'all that this operate on the funds principle. Yes. Here is, some of y'all don't know funds and y'all know the principle. Here is the funds principle. The funds principle, funds of my power. Here's the principle. The principle is, you cannot, let me, they know, hold on, hold on, no shout yet, hold on. Let me tell you what funds principle is. Here's funds principle. That we were all in the house as adults. Dwayne growing, I growing, Devin growing, we waking, getting, making money. And so we would buy our things. You know, you buy you one, 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 one juice. You buy this juice. Because you wake in, and this is the juice that you like. And you don't want nobody touch this juice because you buy this juice. Funds would see that juice in the fridge and say, not in this house. Funds' principle is, whatever is in the house is for the house. You can't bring nothing in. Some of you are so slow, man. You can't bring nothing in the house and call it yours. Because once it enters into the door of the house, it belongs to I, I want to throw this right. So I'm telling you that if God is moving anywhere on anyone in this house, if you are a part of this house, that suggests that the same blessing is on the way to your house. Now can you give God glory because you are in a house where it's going to be released? Glory to God. Just go ahead and just touch your neighbor. Don't bother. Just touch and tell the man it's in the house. It's in the house. It's in the house. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I tell you, when when cat walk open up a new a new location. Jiku Diplomat need to get ready. When Jiku Diplomat expand, Lilac Sky need to get ready. When Lilac expand, Miller's Chem Dry need to get ready. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. When, if it's in the house, it's in the house. Expansion is hitting it. Glory to God. All right, let, let, me, let me give you this word and then get about here because um, I, I feel it, boy. I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Uh, um, but since we're talking about what's in the house, um, um, some of you did not hear Marisha's testimony that um, when she had the scan, the scan suggested that one of her lungs was, was uh, 
was not blowing up properly, it was not expanding, I said blowing up, it wasn't expanding properly, it was, it was, it was abnormal. Uh, the Lord gave a word in this house that her lungs were being restored. She didn't even know at the time there was anything wrong with her lungs, but the Lord gave a word. Um, um, and she had a major collapse two, three weeks ago, almost died, um, just about died. They thought she was gone. She didn't pray to Jesus until God, she's coming home. Uh, and, and, and they did a scan after this collapse, after she would have almost died. And the scan came back and confirmed that both lungs are functioning properly. There's nothing wrong with them. All right? So, why are you throw that? Why are you throw that in there? Because it, it ain't just money that in the house. It's healing in the house. It's deliverance in the house. It's breakthrough in the house. I'm telling you, this is a, a house that's gonna be whole. No, nothing missing, nothing lacking, nothing broken. I declare wholeness in this house for the people of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I, I want you guys to continue to stand with us. We're declaring war against cancer. We're still doing that. And I'm telling you, boy, I am so excited. I'm so excited. We're going to see the hand of God manifested. I'm telling you, your Grammy going to be healed. I'm telling you, I know you're, she old and she's and she ready to go to, to die. But no, God says, I'm going to show you how mighty I am. That cancer ain't going to kill her. Glory be to God. Your aunt going to get glory be to God. I don't care how advanced that cancer is. God says, I'm about to move. The knowledge of the glory of the Lord is about to fill the earth. Hallelujah be to God. So I am excited about God that we're about to see, we're about to, and I'm telling you, that God says to us that these 28 days, we're, we were in this 28 day war against cancer, and these 28 days I, was not planned by me, but it ends on, on next week Thursday when we start our conference. We start our healing crusade next week Thursday. Our healing crusade is next week Thursday and next week Friday, and next week Thursday marks the 28th day. So the war against cancer ends at the beginning of our conference. Glory be to God. God says, listen, this, I was, I was setting y'all up and y'all didn't even know it. That we're about to walk in an anointing, not a season. The devil is a liar. We're about to walk in an anointing that princes are going to haunt this place down. They're going to find the number in the phone book. And instead of going, my God, to the cancer center, they're going to bring folk here by the power of God. Not to see Denzel, not to see life, but to have an encounter with God. And we're going to see all manner of cancers healed in the name. Are you all with me? Are you all in this house? Glory to God. So we're about to see it, and so I want you to stand in agreement. I, I'm, I'm asking you, I'm asking you, um, for the next, for the next few days, we got about, we got about 11 days left before next week Thursday. I want you, I'm challenging you, some of you to turn your plates down to be fasting. We're going to, I'm going to start fasting again on Tuesday this week until next week Thursday. Those that want to join me, come on. We're believing God for a move of God. Uh, if you don't have a, no other prayer to pray, I want you just to pray. God send your glory. God send your glory. Send your glory. Send your glory. We want to see the glory of God revealed. That I wanted to be your prayer. God, send your glory. Send your glory on me. Send it on my church. Send it on my children. Send it on my family. Send it on my pastor. God, send it on my house. Send your glory. I always be with that. Can y'all pray? Can y'all commit to that? I want you to commit to that. Over the next, over the next eleven days, we're gonna pray for the glory of God to be revealed. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you. We're going to see it happen. Folks are going to throw up. And when they throw up, the cancer is going to be expelled from their body. Glory be to God. Folks are going to be coughing and the mucus is going to be mixed up with cancer coming out of their body. That sounds, that sounds scornful now, but boy, they're going to celebrate when it happens. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. All right, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Get your Bibles. Get your Bibles. Get your Bibles. Satan, the Lord rebuke you now. In Jesus' name. I declare healing all over this house right now in the name. If you are sick in your body, I feel the Holy Ghost. There it is. Lift your hand. If you're sick in your body, lift your hand right now. Any area of sickness, any degree of sickness, lift your hand now. Regardless of the condition, just lift your hand. Father, in Jesus' name, let healing virtue move through this house. There was, there's somebody who was here because you heard about the miracles that were happening in this house. You were here this morning because you heard that people were being healed in this place, and that's why you're here. God did not miss you. God knew you were coming this morning. That's why we have to do this prayer right here, right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, touch now. Not that Denzel be exalted, not that life worship center be exalted. God caused them to forget my name and caused them to forget the name of this church. 
but let your name be imprinted on the tables of their heart you get all the glory from this healing right now in the name of Jesus you get all the glory you get all the glory you get all the glory hallelujah someone's having a problem breathing some congestion on your chest having problems breathing and you can't take a deep breath when you take a deep breath it starts to hurt your chest gets real tight when you take a deep breath lay your hand on your chest right now whoever you are father we declare healing in the name of Jesus we rebuke you spirit of infirmity cast you back to the pits of hell right now from whence you came glory to God glory to God I dare you now I dare you by faith not because I'm daring you by faith to begin to take some deep breaths now watch the power of God watch the power of God glory to God glory to God hallelujah I declare left shoulder healed in Jesus name hallelujah a right kneecap glory to God a right kneecap I declare now fit to be rebuilt reconstructed now by the power of the Holy Ghost hallelujah cartilage to be replaced right now in Jesus name hallelujah God we bless your name we bless your name just one time we give you the glory right there come on we worship you our Lord you are worthy to be praised say it one more time we give you all the glory say it Somebody else, I see I see you now actually right now right now if you look at your feet your feet are still swollen you came here with your feet swollen power of God is about to touch you right now and even as we're about to declare the Word of God you are you you go you will be shocked when you look down to find out that your feet are going down because your pressure your pressure is, is is not where it should be but by the power of the Holy Ghost your pressure shall be regulated in Jesus name right in this service right here this morning it's gonna happen we give you all and we worship you Wonderful, Jesus. Clap your hands, everybody. Let's give God praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. It is our custom here to stand to honor the word of God. So please indulge us in doing that. Acts chapter number 9. Hallelujah. Acts chapter number 9. Oh, boy. I feel the presence of God. I feel the power of God. My, 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 my. Feel the presence of God. Touch in Jesus' name. Touch.
I'm fighting something. I want to make sure it's, it's not Denzel. Make sure it's God talking. I want you, everybody that can, I want you to get, go in your wallet and give me uh, anything from a dollar to five dollars, please. Everybody that can. It's not your offering. I hear God say, do this. Because he told me to do it, I'm going to do 50. But those say, I'm going to bless somebody. I was fighting there, I want to make sure that's, that's what God is saying. A dollar, two dollars, three dollars, this is not your offering. We want to be a blessing to someone. Quickly, once you get it, come on, bring it. Put it in my hand. Hallelujah. We give you all. Give me a time quickly, please. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. We worship you. That's right. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. God bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you, sir. God bless you. God bless you, man. Bless you. God bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. God bless you, ma'am. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. God bless you. Thank you, Father. God bless you. Hallelujah. I am. Um, one of the things is that I want to be careful. I want to be careful that that we don't move on impulse. We move on the voice of God. And so I, I heard it earlier this week to do this, and I was struggling, saying, God, I want to make sure it's not my heart for the person. Make sure I'm hearing God. And God said about four times, standing up here, to be a blessing to this person. Um, and I <laughs> watch this. This I'm, I'm, I'm watch the final, final steam. Want you pay attention? Watch that. Watch this this week. I promise you. The offering this week is going to be more than last week. Watch it. I promise you that. Even though we just did this. Watch it. It's going to be more offering than last week. God never fails. He's going to do it. It's going to happen. Come here, princess. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's somebody else actually that you said, wow, as you saw us give the seed, and I gave the basket to Princess just now, you, just feel, you felt led just now. You know what? I want so more in our life. If that's what you feel led, do it, go ahead and do it. Go ahead and do it. Don't feel, if ain't you, don't feel forced to do it. But somebody said, you know what? I want, I felt, you felt an agreement just now. You said, you know what? I want, be, I want bless us some more. Amen. Go ahead and do it. Amen. It's the Lord's doing and it's marvelous in our eyes. And we give him all the glory. We give him all the glory. We give him all the glory. Clap your hands again and let's celebrate our God, man. Hallelujah. He's a wonderful God. Amen. The book of Acts chapter number 9 is where we want to take up residence today. Um, when you got it, say I got it. If you don't get it yet, say, but hold on. All right. 
good. We believe that the Lord Jesus Christ, He gave His life as a ransom on the cross of Calvary to make an eternal and abundant life available to all that believe in His triumph over Satan. Amen. Um, for the sake of time, let's let's begin reading at verse number five. Um, well, verse number four. <clears throat> verse number four. Let's let's read, ready read. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the prick. And he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the man which journeyed with him, I mess up? Where are you going this now? I miss half of the verse. What does the rest of the verse say? Oh, okay. Right. Verse 9, last one. And he was three days without sight, neither did he eat nor drink. Amen. We're continuing with our series, part 6 of our series, I Shall Be. Before you take your seat, go to six people fast. Don't take long. Six people and tell them, welcome to the life experience. Don't forget this. I still can't count the six. Amen. Can't count the six. All right. I, I, I am. We're continuing this morning with this teaching that we've been on um, uh, relative to being. Relative to being. Now, on last week, on last week, we um, we began talking about this brother Saul um, and um, uh, talking about the whole the the reality that we preach these wonderful concepts about being about um, not trying to be from a place of doing but but to do from a place of being and we make these things sound so simple sound so rudimentary and truth is they ain't that easy it's not that easy when you've been conditioned to be a certain way all your life to just change just like that the reality is um, <laughs> most of these things these changes these these complete change takes place over a process of time Complete change takes place over a process of time. Um, this is a word for this generation to receive because we are, we are moving into an instant. We think instant. We think right away. Um, there was a time where you had to send a messenger with a letter to send it somewhere else, you know, fella jump on the horse or send it on the boat, you know. And now many of us, when we send our WhatsApp message, if it don't leave in three seconds, we mad. We mad at BDC, we mad at the government, we want fire Barry Christie, we just mad, you know, because things are supposed to happen right before I say I want it to happen. And that's that mindset. Uh, that is a dangerous mindset when it comes to the things of God, actually when it comes to reality, because life doesn't work that way. That things, most everything that is of value happens over a period of time. Most, what happens, I found is that one of the old bishops, and never forget it, Robin's uncle, late uncle, uh, Cleveland Bain, he said this. He says, anything that happens without process is not appreciated. 
He said, anything that you get without having to work for it, you usually squander. And I found that to be true. I grew up in a house where my daddy used to say, turn the water off. You ain't brushing your teeth yet. Turn it off. Turn it on when you get two minutes on. You're ready to do it. Don't, don't. Because you know, children, you, so as you, you get in the bathroom, you turn the water on. And daddy used to say, oh, that. Turn that off. Now I pay in the light bill. I pay in the water bill. And so I make sure I'm ready. Wow, so turn it back off. Because now I pay for that. <laughs> so, so, so when you have to work for it, you appreciate it more. Um, now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Um, this, this seems to be antithetical to the new age thinking in the body of Christ because we, I have, and I'm actually in this whole series about um, being, I'm going to talk about the now, preaching about operating and functioning in the, now, in the now. And so this seems that I'm going against that teaching because I'm telling you that everything, whether it be healing, whether it be salvation, whether it be the filling of the Holy Ghost, whether it be deliverance, they all happen over a period of time. That's hard to swallow for you deep folk, but that's the reality. The reality is they all happen over a period of time. Truth be told, walking in this walk as a believer, it don't happen just like that. Now, there are areas of deliverance. There are, there are areas that you may be delivered from instantaneously, but there are others that you're going to have to fight with. And so complete, complete deliverance happens over time. Complete healing happens over time. How do you say that? Because, yes, there are people that come to this church that have gotten healed in this church, and two weeks later, they were back in their condition because they didn't go through the process of time. Because once you move from this place, the Bible declares this. The Bible says this. He says, when a demon has gone off from a house, he comes back to see what in the place. And if there's nothing there, he gets seven stronger demons, and the eight of them, glory to God, the eight of them come back, and the Bible says the end of the man is worse than the beginning. So there's a process, even with your healing. Even though you come to this church and get healed right in the service, there's a process now of holding on to that healing. Are you all with me? All right? And so we must understand, we must understand that that process is necessary. That's a process is a part of the process. <laughs> process is a part of the process. So here's a wonderful question. The question is then, if salvation is a process, when do I call myself saved? At what point can I call myself a Christian? If healing is this process, when do I call myself healed? If deliverance is a process, when do I call myself delivered? The moment you engage in the process, the mo you become saved the moment you engage in the process of being saved. You become healed the moment you engage in the process of healing. Hmm? See, what the process does, the process, only thing the process does is reveals who you really are on the inside. You just didn't know it yet. So the process then, it only the reason it takes so long is because of how much stuff you got over who you really are. And, 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 and the sooner you can appreciate, because I'm telling you, the healing happens the moment you engage in the process, but now what happens is you need time now for your mind to connect with what God has already done in your spirit. Are you with me? So that time period is really not the healing manifesting, it's you realizing that the healing is already manifested. It's you. See, <laughs> persons, I, 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 I would hear our young, our young soldiers, them, they used to tell me a lot of times, uh, they were talking, you know, I tell my boys, them, man, I'm trying to live this Christian life. You're not trying to live this Christian life. I'm trying to be saved. No, you ain't trying to be saved. Because being saved ain't your work, it's his work. You, you're trying to come into the realization of your salvation. I try, boy, I try and I believe in God to heal me. No, you, he's already, he said, by my stripes, you've already been healed. You, I, I, I'm, 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 I think Peter goes and past stands. He, he says, Peter says, you are healed now. Uh, uh, Isaiah says, you were healed. Peter says, you are healed. As the truth is, you're healing, you're not, you ain't trying to get healed. You're already healed. You're trying to come into your healing. And so the process is the time it takes for you to walk into what you already are. 
<laughs> Say it again. The process is the time it takes for you to walk into who you already are. You, you, God already, if he says you're ready to heal, what, you ain't trying to get healed. You heal already. Is it, the question is now, how, how long it take you to realize that you heal? Because then once you start realizing that you heal, you're going to act like you heal. Glory to God. Um, let's, use it, let's use this one. Um, when you realize that you are rich, you will start acting like you're rich. Now some of y'all jack up. Because some of y'all believe when you <laughs> let me help you, let me dispel the myth about acting like you're rich. Persons who buy in Gucci and that kind of stuff, you're not acting like you're rich. You're acting like you're poor. Clap on, clap off. <laughs> okay. What y'all do while I was gone? <laughs> Light, lights on clap now. Okay. All right. Um, yeah. I, I go on it for a week now. They change the lights around. Uh, so, 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 um, you, if you still, if you still, you still, um, 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 buying the newest iPhone? Where you still ain't understand, like, the iPhone one yet? One. <laughs> and like you didn't buy the iPhone 6? You, you ain't thinking like you're rich. So you, 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 you ain't ready to become rich yet. Glory be to God. So there's a thinking. There's a thinking that we, that we function in. The person that is healed, they function a certain way. Glory be to God. The person, when you realize that you are healed, you don't pray no more, Lord, heal me. You say, God, I thank you that I'm healed today. And you start planning your life as though you're healed. Shabando. You start planning what you're going to do today. Planning who you're you going to bless. Planning who you're going, you going to be a difference to. When, when, when you are believing God to, to, when you know that you've been delivered from that sexual demon that's been behind you, glory be to God, when you're delivered, you're going to stop calling the person. Voice activated too. All right. It's clapping. Voice activated. Amen. Yeah. You, you, you are. <laughs> you, you, you are. Go, look at what it's saying. Yeah. <laughs> Let me turn back on. Ah. Uh, that. There you go. So you. <laughs> You will get, thank God, God is so awesome. That God is so powerful. God would send an electrician in the morning, the light tripping out. God, I thank you. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know what I'm trying to get him to come here? He come here this morning because we need him this morning. See how good God, perfectly see how good God is. Hallelujah. All right. So, so. <laughs> yeah, the same one he can light tripping out. All right. So, so. Please let you all see it. I wrote something down that's very powerful. Actually, it just sounded intelligent. That's why I want to read it. Uh, it says this. It says. He says that when, when, when you learn that you already are what you're trying to be, he says this, um, that manifestation will only serve as physical materialization of a pre-existing spiritual realization. Wow. Tell your neighbor, he read that. He read that. It's mine. That's mine. I read that one. That's mine. He says, he says when, you, when, you, when you learn... When you learn that you already are what you're trying to be, he says the manifestation, the manifestation will only serve as a physical materialization of a pre-existing spiritual realization. Wow. So spiritually, you've already realized it. And so you're already this, and because we are more spirit than we are, glory be to God, because we are more spirit than we are flesh, then we live in that spiritual realization. And so we're not waiting on the materialization in the physical. That's only a bonus because we're ready to move on from that. I, I didn't pass healing now. I didn't to the next level because my, my, my realization, my reality is not what I see here. The things that are seen are temple. The things that are not things are the things that are eternal. And because I'm operating in eternal life, and oh man, is this too much? Since, since he has given me, he has given me, he, he will not, he's not going to give you eternal life. He's already given you eternal life. Many of us have the mindset that we get eternal life when we die. You get eternal life when you get saved. 
And so you function with an eternal, uh, an, an eternal realization. Your reality is eternal. And so things that are temporal don't move you. Because you're now living in your eternal life. The same person doesn't die. They only transition. Yes. Yes. From one level of glory to the next. Glory be to God. Because I, I receive my eternal life. And that's why Paul can say, for me to live is Christ. Glory yes. be to God. And, yes, I'm a, and to die is gain because I have, I have received my eternal life now. I ain't got to die to get it. Right. Jesus died so I can get it so I ain't got to die no more. Thank God. Is that too much? Okay. All right. So, so we, we are living. Oh, you put it on the screen. All right. That way again. All right. Then. So. So let's, let's, let's then move then. Let's then move. Um, so with that understanding though, many of us, we, we really, most of us ain't get to the physical materialization yet. We ain't get there yet. We're still trying to really grab on to the spiritual realization. So, so we are in this place that we defined last week as transition. We are in that's what it means. We're just in transition. We ain't where we want to be, but we're not where we used to be. And we told you last week that transition is uncomfortable. Transitioning, you, you really don't, you don't know what you is. You, 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 let me say it again. You don't know what you is. I'm smart. I mean to say that. You don't know what you is. Because you, you ain't that, but you ain't this. So you're like a half. You're like a fraction. Somewhere, somewhere, somewhere in there. And that's where most of us find ourselves, where um, some of us are afraid. There's some of you in the church right now that you hear stuff, but you're afraid to say God talking to me because you know you ain't there yet. Uh -huh. I, I, so God is in fact speaking to you, but in your mind you ain't there yet, so you don't perceive it as God talking to you because you know you ain't there. So you're in this place of transition where, where, where you... You really, I was out form and void. <laughs> Without form and you're void because you're trying. And uh, transition is dangerous because you, then you, you, you can latch on to anybody in transition. It's ve very dangerous. And you could take the form of whoever you hang around when you transition. Yes. It's dangerous. Yes. It's dangerous. When somebody trying to lose weight and, and they start hanging around some people, they start buying tight clothes. We celebrate the fact that you, you are no longer 22, you're 20, but you can't wear 16. Preach, Denzel, preach. Preach. And, and so, so my advice to you is, since you, I, know you try, I know your goal is from 22 to 8. You are 20 now. Don't hang with the 8s yet. Don't go shopping with the 8s yet. Because you will feel tempted. You will feel tempted to wear the leather pants. You can't wear leather pants here. <laughs> Glory to God. We, we, were, we, were, we, were, we, were, we were over there um, um, yesterday, and we saw, Robin and I, we saw this person, and we, we were just trying to figure out how can we fix that. <laughs> Maybe we can, No. Because you try, because you know, she they buy it at the store, so you, whew. <laughs> we just gotta figure out how to fix that to make that look better. Um, so, so, <laughs> so it's a dangerous place when you're in transition. When in the spiritual context, when you're in transition, let me let me give you a word of warning: dark church people. Because it is in transition that many of us become churched. Glory to God. It is in transition that many of us cling on to the tradition and get locked into form. Get locked into rudiments. Get locked into routine. When it, so you got to, please hear you, hear me, hear you little pastor, big pastor, that when you are in transition, duck churchy people. Duck them. Because they're they going to they can try to get you into their routine. They can try to get you into their flow. And what happens is most people who enter transition never leave. 
They never leave. They never get to their, their, their place that God had intended for them to be because they got stuck with people who never got out of transition. Yeah. And when you hang around stuck people, you end up stuck. Hallelujah. And so what you want to do, you want to find somebody who's moving. Find someone who's progressing. Yeah? All right. And so, so we can get to this. But anyway, here we go. So we're using, for example, now to talk about this transition phase. Because we're teaching um, um, how do we handle, because the vast majority of the church is in the phase of transition. We're not at our spiritual apex yet. We're not at a place of function at our maximum potential yet. Um, but we ain't where we used to be. And so the vast majority of people we're preaching to are in this place of transition. And so how do I cope with this? How do I deal with this? And so we pulled out from Scripture through the Spirit of God, led us to Brother Saul, to Brother Saul. Um, the transition climaxed when he became Paul. And so the reality is, he ain't Paul yet, and so it was amazing that I actually was looking, and all this whole process, the word Paul never came up, never came up, because he wasn't ready for Paul yet. And so we're still talking about Saul, the fellow from Tarsus, the fellow who had been conditioned. Now, we, we gave you some points last week. I want to put this up now, and um, what, oh, I'm doing good. Glory to God, I'm doing good. I gave you 11 points, but I'm doing good. I'm ready for point number one. All right, last week we told you a few things. We told you that um, um, in coping with transition, the first hurdle that you must overcome, you must overcome the hurdle of what you used to do in your past. What you used to do, who you used to be in your past, has no bearing on whom God has called you to be. I don't care how much people you didn't sleep with. I don't care how much weed you didn't smoke. I don't care how much dumbness you didn't do. Well, truth be told, if you're any one of those people who are doing dumbness, smoking weed, sleeping around, you're in the right church. Glory to God. <sighs> Trust me. Tea you in the right church. Oh, hallelujah. Someone in your pew, someone in your row can say amen to that. I promise you. Yeah. Whatever you in in this church. Someone can say, baby, I've been there. I've been there, man. You ain't, you ain't, calm down. You ain't saying. You ain't saying nothing. I haven't been there. All right? So the first thing is that he says, he says that you must, you must not allow your past to bog you down. You did it. Get over it. It's over. Now, now, some of y'all in denial. I, there's, there's a word that I'm supposed to preach a long time. I preach it yet. Um, um, because we, we like to preach to victims. But we don't preach to perp perpetrators. And a lot of us in victims. A lot of us is perps. I always smile at a wonderful text in there in the book of Psalms where David says, against thee only have I sinned. What? That's a lie. I always quote that. God against the only. You kill, you kill the man. You take the man's wife. Sleep with the man's wife. The woman get big up and you bring him. Sorry, I shouldn't say big up here. Bad word. Yeah. All right. If you, 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 you big up the man's wife. Then you bring the man home. So he can sleep with his wife. Nigga ain't sleep with his wife. I said, nigga, oh man. It's, nigga. He didn't sleep with his wife. I used to say, oh, shoot, I'm in trouble. So you kill the boy. And then marry the boy wife. And then go to God and say, God against the only. Have I, what? Lies, I tell you. <laughs> Straight lies. All right, so. Um, hallelujah. But all that. All that, all that kind of stuff. Be, be honest with who you are. Be honest with who you used to be. Because that's another church, that's another church trait. You have dug that church trait. One of the traits of church people is we lie but who we are. That's why we never get delivered. We don't get delivered because the first step of deliverance is being honest with where you are. And so church people, that, that's why church people usually keep on repeating the cycle. Repeating that cycle because they don't like to own up to who they are. They don't like to own up to their weakness, to their faults. All right? So, so while we understand that who you used to be has no bearing on who God has called you to be, you must own up to who you used to be. So you can be delivered from that old person. All right. The next thing we told you last week was um, um, who you've been conditioned to be usually contradicts who you've been called to be. 
all right? Our conditioning usually is, is, is totally, totally diametrically opposed to who God has called us to be. And that's wonderful because when you walk in who God has called you to be, then you can't take no credit. All right? And so when you're going through transition and you feel God taking you in an area that is totally against who you know to be, don't fight that. Because God is doing this because no, nobody in their right mind could believe that Mopey preach on Tuesday. Not Mope Dog. She called herself Mope Dog, by the way. You did. We have it recorded. Recorded. She said, Mope Dog. <laughs> I, they ain't going to believe that the pastor gone away and leave Mope Dog to preach. That totally contradicts who she used to be. And God has a habit of doing that because when you get to where God has called you to be, you could say it was nobody but God. Good God Almighty. Now, this is the good David right here. If it had not been the Lord who was on my side, glory be to God. All right, all right. So, so it, it, there's, a, there's, a, there's going to be a contradiction. Then the next thing is, is that you must become blinded to your conditioning in order to walk in your being. All right, so this, in transition, in transition, you will go through a period of blindness. Now, it's, it's in your best interest to choose to allow, to make yourself blind, to cover your own eyes. And if you don't do it, God will help you. If you don't become blinded to that old person, he will help you like he did for Brother Saul. He blinded him. Lost his ability to see. Let's move on to the next point. This is where I want to get to because we run out of time. I want to get to this. We ended with this last week on this topic about the prick. Where Jesus says to Paul, Saul, how long are you going to kick against the prick? Yeah? And we explained to you that the prick was a rod, a pointed rod, a rod with a point on the end um, um, that they would put behind the oxen. And whenever the oxen would try to move back to go in the opposite direction, he would hit against this, this, this uh, pointed edge, and it would cause him to go forward. Uh, and what we said to you from that point is um, nobody ever addresses the fact that Paul was not willingly persecuting the church. Paul was struggling to persecute the church. How do we know he was struggling? Because Jesus said he was kicking against the prick. He was experiencing opposition, but still wasn't changing his direction. And like many of us, the dumbness that we have been doing, somebody say dumbness. dumbness. Get used to saying that. Say it again. Say dumbness. dumbness. I right, say this. Say this. I didn't do dumbness. I know that's Bahamian. If you watch it online from the United States, just say it. You know what it means. Say it again. Say, I didn't do dumbness. I didn't do dumbness. Right. Right. All right. So, so the truth is, even though all of us have just announced, who was, who was brave enough to announce, that we didn't do dumbness, truth is, there was something on the inside of us telling us, stop the dumbness. Not, do, do I have a witness there? Do I, do, that, that we were doing our dumbness and it, we wasn't saved, you know. We wasn't saved, but there was something, 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 something pricking saying, man, stop this dumbness. And of course, we, would, we prayed and then some of us, after we got saved, we were still doing dumbness. And we would pray that prayer, God, if you get me out of this piece of dumbness here. I'll never do this dumbness no more. And was, Lord God, as soon as you get sober, you're back to the dumbness again. As soon as it come, because she was late. Oh, preach, son. Preach. Man, it was late, and then you, you on your face before God, showed the rubber the man, and the She called you, tell you it reach. Some of y'all breathe so high, like, Pastor, how you know? <laughs> how you know? <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, here, so here's a question. My God. I, I, here's the thing. Here's the thing. This, this will be ended last week. Here's the thing. Here's the question. Why do we kick against the prick for so long? 
That's the question. How is it, like Saul, because many of us, we, we, we said this last week, many of us never really thought about the fact that because Jesus said he was kicking against the prick, that Paul, Saul, was not comfortably persecuting the church. There was a struggle going on inside of Saul. There was someone inside saying, stop doing this foolishness. But why is it that we cannot yield to that voice that's telling us to stop? The answer to this question is right in the text. In the text, later down, it says that when he gets, when Ananias gets to him, Ananias lays hands on him, and he becomes filled with the Holy Spirit. Here is our answer. Based on the fact that Ananias had to lay hands on him for him to be filled with the Holy Spirit, the suggestion is, prior to that moment, he was not filled. Now, go to Romans 8. Get it there for me, Jeff. Who's, who's there? Jeff is there? Whoever it is there. Get it. Oh, Jeff is there. Hey, Jeff. All right. So whoever it is about there. Get it from me. Romans chapter 8, verse 6. Watch this. Watch this. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Verse 7. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. All right, now what is Paul saying here? Paul says that if your, if your body, if your mind, if your being is not under the rule of the Holy Spirit, you will never, you will never go in a direction that pleases God. When you are in the fight against the prick, where the prick is saying, stop it, and your flesh is saying, do it, your flesh will never take you in the direction that God wants you to go. Because the answer is there, Paul says, your carnal mind is an enemy of God. So your carnal mind, Damien, will never push you into God's purpose. It will always, even though it makes all the sense in the world for you to go in the direction that God wants you to go, because you're in favor of the Holy Spirit, you are not going to go in that direction. You're going to constantly fight. I, 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 was, I was sharing with, with somebody this, this weekend. I said, listen, man, once you cannot fight a spiritual battle using your carnal mind. You will always lose to that battle. You will not win that battle. Once you know that you're in a spiritual fight, you got to pick up the Bible, the class, thank you God, says that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Because if you go carnal, carnal is going to go against God. So if you want to fight and your mind going against God, that means you're fighting with the enemy. Is that making sense to y'all? So he says then, he says, tell the folks that the reason you're going to always choose to go in the opposite direction is because you are carnal. Until you get to a place, back to the old Denzel scenario, until you get to the place, here is flesh, here is spirit, that you can bring your spirit above your flesh, you will always choose you will always choose the dumbness. You will say, I ain't going to do it. You're going you you to swear, even though you ain't, what we don't say, don't swear. You will swear you're going to do it no more. But because you're in this place where your flesh is higher than your spirit, I promise you, you may, you may abstain for a couple of days, a couple of weeks, whatever the case is, but I promise you at some point, you're going to break down. Now, some of y'all don't like hearing that, but when you think about it, that has been the story of your life. That you've had moments of success, but the, all those moments of success did was they led you to your failure. That's all they did. Because you cannot, he says, if you are in the flesh, you can't please God. Your flesh is at, the Bible says, at enmity. It means that it is an arch enemy. It's fighting hard against the will of God. It ain't going to let you go God's way. It will never direct you the way that God wants you to go. It will always go in the opposite direction because that's what it does. Those of you that are believing God in faith, and, and Rob and I talked about this, that how we, 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 we're having a faith, we're in a faith walk right now. I said, Rob, we got to stay in the Spirit. We got to stay praying in the Holy Ghost. Stay seeking the Word of God because as soon as we get in our carnal mindset and start looking with our natural eyes, you will start doubting God. We're in this fight against cancer. 
Some of you, I'm, I know I'm, I'm staff has come to me and a few other members come to me and said, boy, my mother or my grandmother or my cousin, my auntie, whatever the case is, they know Ingrid's aunt um, is battling with cancer. If you continue to look at the person, you won't get depressed. If you continue to look at the process, you won't get depressed. Because you're carnal, because now you're using the carnal mind. And if you look carnally, you're going to be broken. Your carnal mind ain't going to say, Jesus is going to bring out. Your carnal mind is going to say, oh God, that one died with it. That one died with it. And they look better than her. So I know she's gone. That's what carnal mind says. But when you glory to God, when you get and switch gears and go with a spiritual mindset, allow the Holy Spirit to direct you, you say, God, his strength is made perfect. In our weakness. We say that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed in us. And so when you look at death, you see life, man. Glory to God. You celebrate darkness because darkness sets the stage for light to shine. Glory be to God. And that, that's what the spiritual mindset does. And so this is why he says, that he, he, he says, Aaron Hayes said, now I don't need you just to baptize this boy in water. I want you to lay hands on him because he needs the Holy Ghost. And so what we're suffering from in the church today is a lack of Holy Ghost. Bottom line. We, we are lacking when it comes to the Holy Ghost. I was telling a group of these ladies here, some of our prayer warriors, listen, read a shout out Eba. They'll tongue you to death. I, I told them, that's my prayer, sheet of mass, you all pray, man. That's why I said, you all, they, they have reserved seating. It tongues us. <laughs> tongues, tongues us. To me, to me, to me, I don't know. To me, go, to me, go, to me, go, I start crying. <laughs> uh, I've torn my tongues us. I told them. When they're in the spirit, they ain't wait nothing. Pastor, you just say that? Yeah. I told them that in a meeting. I don't know, but that your, because your spiritual assignment is so high, as soon as you get carnal, the enemy can jump on that. And he's going to try to reverse what God has called you to do in the spiritual realm. And so as soon as you switch into carnal gear, the enemy moves in quickly. Say, so let me get him. And so this is not, this, is, this ain't cheering food here, but this is for grown food to understand that God intends for us to live on that high spiritual plane. Now, church folk don't like to hear that because, because we, they, they say, oh, you're too spiritually, you're so heavily minded, you're not earthly good. No, we're supposed to be heavenly. I can't help it. I can't help being heavenly minded. I only become earthly good when I'm heavenly minded. That saying is so dumb to say, you're so heavenly minded, you are not earthly good. It is impossible to be good on earth unless you're heavenly minded. It's when you're earthly minded that you ain't no good. Oh, man. Because, see, heavenly minded folks realize that nothing manifests on earth unless it first manifests in heaven. And so when I see the glory of the God, and so my heaven mindset conditions me for what's about to manifest on earth. That's why you stress and I'm not. Because I'm heavenly minded. Glory be to God. So, so the reason we constantly, because we had a, we had about 40 persons last week that said, probably more than that, almost half the church that got up and said, listen, man, I'm fighting this prick. I'm fighting against the prick. I'm trying to go in the next direction. The, the, the way to beat that fight, the way to win that fight is to get filled with the Spirit of God. All right? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Good, good. Was that good? Yeah. Good. All right. So I'm going to say, I, I didn't know what you just said just now. All right. Cool. Let's, let's move something else. Um, before I close it off, something I, I wrote down, I want you to get this, that... How do you know that, that you are living a life under, under leading the Spirit of God? You know this when the pricking stops. When the pricking stops. When there's nothing beating on your conscience. When you are functioning without guilt. When you're functioning in a place of peace. It wasn't no children here to say something, but just plain children here. Yeah. Yeah. I just said, listen, code. I said, listen, code. Robin and I, um, Symphony, we got married on June 10th, 2006. And to me, on June 7th, I say, oh, God, I got to, on June 11th, I say, Lord, I got to repent. The prick 
fucking stop. <laughs> what do you know, man? It stopped. It was gone. It was just gone. Hold on, Will. Hold on. The pricking will stop. I'm telling you. Stop. It's like on the 11th, I read the prayer. And it's like, God, I'm sorry. I guess it. Oh. I'm to say it. sorry. Sorry. <laughs> 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 I was like, what mother? I got to pray no more. Uh, anyway, so. <clears throat> um. <laughs> So, so, so you know that you are in the will of God, that you move into your place of being when the pregnant stop. Until the pregnant stop, you stop. Or you can, you can just, you can be all joke up. Glory to God. All right. All right, let, let, me, let me get this next one. I'll get this next one. Here's this. Um, he says, the next point, verse number seven. Verse number seven says this. He says that, that there, there were persons, glory to God, that there were persons who heard what Saul heard but did not see what he saw. God says, when you are in transition, realize that there are going to be people who won't be in your company, won't be around you, but ain't going to be able to perceive what God is saying to you. It is not your job to pick them up and take them with you. There are going to be people that don't care how much you heard God and you know what God is saying and you celebrate what God is saying and you're trying to translate it to them and they ain't hearing nothing you're saying. Stop fooling with that. Because all they're going to do is they're going to bog you down. And a lot of the times, the people who cannot hear what God is saying to you are those who are close to you. Say one more time. A lot of times, the persons that cannot perceive what God is saying to you and, and you're trying to get this over to them are the ones that are close to you. And let me help you with this. If you ain't minded them, leave them alone. Now, if you're married, you got to go together. So you got to keep on working it until they get it. But if you all ain't married, that's your hint. Hint. Smarty. That if they can't perceive at this level, you will still marry them? If at this point that you are hearing from God and, and, and they cannot perceive what God is saying to you, how in the world you will take it to the next level? When the reason for you coming together is to do the will of God, to hear the voice of God. You're, that, that's, that's why you're marginal. Some of you thought you get married for sex. You don't get married for sex. That's what you get married for. You get married to fulfill God's purpose. God says, Adam can't finish all this what I gave him to do, so let me make for him a help meet. Someone to help him to complete this work. That's what you get married for. So if you are hearing, glory be to God, why are you shouting, boy? I ain't got no voice. You are hearing from God concerning your assignment and the person who you dating, you're you crazy self, dating them and they, yeah, you're crazy. Because you know they ain't got no spiritual, you know they have no spiritual insight. No spiritual perception. No, no idea, no clue up to the voice of God. And you can't, you trying to relate stuff to them, they can't hear and you're going to sit up with that love them. Pastor, can you counsel us? Glory to God. So don't be locked down. Don't get, don't get entangled with persons that, because listen, the Bible says they heard but didn't see. See speaks to revelation. The, the word that you hear is not revelation until you can see it. 
The word does not become revelation until you can see it. This has become so real to me over these last few months where I'm realizing something, princess, that people who have been in the church with all my life and I'm realizing something now, I'm finally realizing something, that what we are preaching here in life is no different from what has been preached all my life. The problem was we weren't seeing it. Just like the fellas that with Saul, they heard, didn't see and so now I can be in a concert. We were in the concert last week Friday with Ty Trebet. And Ty Trebet, the guy, shared a testimony about healing from cancer. And I looked around the room. I'm saying to myself, did these people hear what he just said? And the answer is, they heard it, didn't see it. Glory to God. That, that, that. We can be in these environments and, and sitting down here and pastors preaching and people leave the church today and say, boy, that word was so powerful. That touched me right at the core of my being. And somebody else said, boy, pastor was off today. Well, I, I ain't got nothing today. Because you hear, but don't see. Verse 7 says, them brethren heard what Paul heard. It's all heard. They heard the thing, but they didn't see it. And you, you, you got to be careful of that. And don't allow yourself to be locked down with those kind of people. I want to get to this last point for the day. I want to get to this last one. All right. Now, now, the, la the last point that, that I, I want to get to, I, I have the premises, last point, for the day, uh, with two kind of sub points that ain't tied directly into this text. But Lord, I had to share these. All right. Um, go to verse number eight. This is, this, is, this is somewhat of a departure from where we are in this teaching, but I got to give you this. I got to give you this because God said there's some people here coming this morning who need to hear these two points. All right? So I'm, I'm letting you know now it's kind of a departure, but it's right in the text. He says don't skim over this. Make, make sure this is made plain because people in this house need to hear this. Are you ready? You ready for this? All right. Verse number eight says this. And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no man. But they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. Now, here's the question. Who were these people who led him by the hand? The same brethren who he was riding with. The same brethren, the old crew, JJ, who he was rolling with, these were the brethren that led him by the hand. First point God says, give the house, because somebody did hear this. Number one, he says, be careful. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Saul was the one who got orders to go to Damascus. He was the one, uh, Romeo, who who was calling the shots, who had papers to go to Damascus to persecute. Those brethren were following Saul. They were, they, were his, they were his accompaniment. They were the ones who was giving support to him. So he was the chief. God says, tell the people in life, number one, those of you who are in leadership, be careful how you treat those that follow you. He said, say that to all the supervisors in life. All the bosses, all the managers, because some of y'all, when y'all get a little bit of power, y'all just get crazy and stupid. Because you got a little title now, you believe you can treat people any kind of how. It's amazing how we forget how it felt when we were at the bottom as soon as we get one little bit of promotion. He said, I got to kill that demon today, that arrogant, prideful, haughty spirit, that you get one little piece of promotion, you got two people under you, and all of a sudden now you're the chief. Get a little dead name tie. All of a sudden, now you somebody. We got to kill that spirit, and God knows we can't let it get in this church. Because that destroys churches. You give them a little office, make them a little um, ladies present. Oh, God, all of a sudden, now they're the chief now. They want parking space. We got to kill that. Jesus says, the greatest among you must be the greatest servant, man. That the higher you get, the lower you should get. That's destroying not only the church, this country, that we got folks who don't know how to serve. And you got to be careful because you don't know when you can get blind and you're going to need them same folk to lead you. I told you I had to, I, I had dropped this. I, I, I didn't preach on being now. I had to deal with this. God said, there's some house cleaning. I can deal with Do some little house cleaning. This house cleaning now. You don't know when you're going to get blind. Be careful how you treat that brethren who sit next to you now who smell bad. 
Because you don't know when God will turn his life around and he's going to be the same dude who got to give you a job. I've seen this in my life, uh, 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 Brent. I've seen it where, where guys that I was in C.A. Dries with, we, we was in C.A. Dries together, and, and we was wearing, we was wearing Gino D. They was wearing Clarks. We was wearing Gabardin. They was wearing Lee. You know? And there's a demand, they're talking so bad. See, the same guys, them who's, uh, they don't treat you like nothing. Same fellas them now. I see them on the road. Um, but, but, hey, what is that, schoolie? Schoolie, man, man, man. Troy, boy, Troy, boy, one little blind, one boy, one ace, man. Schoolie, what are you saying? These are the same dudes, them. When you go to fun day, they get $20. Daddy give you money for your uniform. <laughs> y'all ain't, y'all know you're talking about, man. Y'all. That is a food home. <laughs> and now, them same brethren, Tario, the same brethren, who was clean, is in my mind, my mind, there's a train boy, my school eight. Be, if you, if you, if you. be careful, man. Be careful how you treat folks when you want to talk. Because life has a way, I'm telling you, if you live long enough, life has a way of flipping the script on you. And before you know it, that same little reader who broke, got to have your child get in COB. And, and, and God will make it so that the, you, you have to humble yourself before that same person. Before that same person. So, 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 man, listen, y'all fix your nasty attitudes, man. And you know, you know what? Some of us are going to stay, let me, I, and I curse you, I tell you the truth. Some of us are going to stay broke because we broke and got attitude. Wow. <laughs> you, 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 I just laugh when I hear people talk about, boy, you, you think it's right. All them pastors, them, I hear Creflo Dollar got, got three um, Rolls Royce and got plane. You think it's right? I said, well, he got money. You broke and you got stink ways. You think it's right for you to be poor to be the stupid? <laughs> to me, if you're poor, you should be nice. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it's saying to me. We, we, you, we, you, can't, you can't pay tithes and you ain't making nothing now. So, so, so watch this. He says, be careful. Be careful how you treat those that are following you now. Because you don't know when they're going to have to lead you. The Bible says, them same brethren have to lead them into the city. Here's the next one, number two. On the same point, and then I'm done. I got to give you this. God says, now picture this in your mind. Saul is now blind. He's blind, and now these brethren got to take him to the city. Point number two is this. Under this point, that I had to get to the house because this is our little housekeeping. We got to do now. God says, tell the house, don't travel with no one that you can't trust to lead you. When I get ice out last night, God says, don't be traveling nowhere, Ingrid, with anyone that you can't trust to lead you. If you don't trust them, why are you moving with them? If you can't trust them, why are you hanging with them? Because you never know when something will happen to you and you will need them to carry you. And if, they, if you don't trust them, you don't want them carrying you. So why are you moving together? I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you, girlfriend. Dump that dude. Get rid of that young man. You cannot trust him. Why are you together? Why are you putting yourself in that position where he's already shown you that he cannot be trusted and you're still walking with him? Come on, man. You're better than that. 
You cannot afford to be connected with anybody in this season that you're in now with some folks that you can't trust. The assignment is too great. And some of you turning me off right now, you need to turn me on. I'm talking to you because you still got a person around you. He didn't cheat on you three, four times. But he changed now. He ain't no more saved. He ain't got no more Holy Ghost. But you so gullible. Why don't you start loving yourself? Amen. You start valuing yourself. You weren't more than that man. God says, make this announcement in this house. Do not, from this point on, be man, check everybody that you're walking with. Check everyone in your circle. You can't afford to have nobody like that in your circle right not now. Because they will sabotage where God is trying to take you, man. They will cut your destiny short. Some, some, some of your two friends, you don't need all these friends. Love yourself, man. Why you can't hang with yourself? I tell him, I, I, I go to eat, and I tell him, Muda, I don't want to next send one send me. Muda, I'm going to play there. I don't want nothing in front of them. I said, no, just me. I want two main cars. So we bring one after another. No, bring two of them now. I, I, I love me, man. So I, I might listen, man. I, 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 everybody in this house, do something for me. I want you at some point this week, take half an hour to take yourself out. Even if you just carry yourself ice cream. Take just you one. Take you one and go. I, you can't afford TCBY. Go to Lickety Split. All right, you can't afford that. Go to Esso on the run. Go to the little nutty buddy right there. Get one of them with the pen, peel the thing off, and you go on the beach, cross your leg, and you eat that slow. I try to help somebody, man. Tell your neighbors to love, love yourself, love yourself, love yourself. Because if you love yourself, there's no way you will compromise your own security with someone that you don't trust. Wow. And some of you are saying, well, well I, I know it could be me. Well, if it's me too bad, I, you won. It's probably me. I'm not a trusting person. Well, until I get a trusting person, you are in my life. You, you, you got to love you that much. Man, I got to go, man. I really want to deal with this because some of y'all got some people in your life you all need to get rid of, man. Y'all got some, some idiots who will hang around y'all, some jokers who will hang y'all, and you around there, you calling him, and you, you got to call him, keep on texting him because you don't know where he is, you don't know who you with, and you, that's stupid. Lord God. Hallelujah. I ain't mean to call you stupid, man. I didn't call you stupid. I said, that's stupid. Because you, you even ain't married. Anybody that you dating and you'll be checking their phone, what you dating them for? You are the idiot. So, oh, God. I use all kind of bad words. Oh, man. Children, please forgive me. Lord. But come on here, man. You got to love you more than that. You don't, you don't step down to someone to be with them. Nehemiah said, I own this one and I can't come down. If you don't talk to me, come up here. And you got to develop that kind of mindset. Nigga. Sorry, I said, nigga, oh, God. I just out there now. Oh, man. All right. So, sorry, Will. Nigga, if you ain't ready, step up to me. If you ain't ready, step up to me. Goodbye to you. Saul, Saul had thank Saul had brothers with him he could trust. Because even though he was blind, he put his life in these brothers' hands. They could have pimp on him, man. They could have got they could have gotten the boy killed. They could have gotten Saul killed. 
But he chose those ones to be with him. He's careful how he chose the people to be around. I've said this in this church. Oh, God. Robert, go to go to God. Start to God. Uh, I've said it in this church. You are not supposed to be friends with everyone in this church. Everybody is supposed to be your friend. Get over it. You don't join church to make friends. You join church to fulfill purpose. I said this upstairs back in the day. Be friendly to everyone. But befriend very little. Say it again. Be friendly to everyone. But befriend a small, small few. Because the Bible says being having friends is expensive. Y'all know the text. Y'all think you know the text. Y'all know the text. The text says that he that wants friends must show himself friendly. You know what that text means? That text means that it's a price to pay to have plenty of friends. Because it means you got to always be friendly. And some of you are too sour to have plenty of friends. So keep your sour self to yourself. Having plenty of friends is expensive. I, some people just call me and say, man, I, I, I like you so much, I won't be your friend. I say, hold on, let me jump. I ain't like that. No, I said, cool, dude, but I ain't like that. Because people think, use my friend, that means you call me every other day. I, I ain't into that. I ain't time for that. So all these, all these the brethren I'm in the church, my pastor, you ain't call me this week. Wait. <sighs> really? I gotta go. Be careful of those people in your circle. Be careful of the people who you allow to be in that inner space, man. Saul had brothers around them. Who we can trust. Did y'all receive this word today? Yes. Clap your hands if you received the word. Yes. Wait, Tim. Come on, we're standing, stand, we're standing, we're standing, we're standing, we're standing. Every head is bowed, your eyes closed. If you are not saved in this room, don't leave this place. Every eye is closed. Man, the love of God. I feel the presence of God in this house. Even though we were teaching this now, there was no shouting. I feel the presence of God. If you're here now and you're not saved, I want you to lift your hand right now. Lift your hand. Let go. I see that hand. Come on, lift your hand. If you're not saved, don't be... Dead. Close. Every eye is closed. Every eye is closed. Every eye is closed. Every eye is closed. Nobody looking around. If you're not saved, and you want to give God your life, this is the day, man. I'm not trying to sell you no know, fire insurance. This isn't about running from hell. This is about running to the love of God. Not running from hell, but running to God. To a love that never lets up. If you're here now, I saw one or two hands one more time. If you are here and you have not given your life to the Lord, I want you to lift your hand right now. Lift your hand right now. I see those hands. Wow. Wow, I see those hands. I see those hands. I want to ask, Timmy's coming now just to lead this prayer of salvation. I want to ask those of you that lifted your hands to begin to make your way to this altar right now. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on quickly. Come on, don't be afraid. Come on. God bless you, darling. God bless you. Come on, come on, come on. I saw some hands over here. Come on, don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on, darling. God bless you. God bless you. Come on, come on. Over there. Come on. No, no pressure. Come on, come on. Let's do this. Come on. Come on, come on, saints. Give God glory. Hallelujah. Anybody else? Come on, come on. Let's, let's, let's do this this morning. God is awesome. Is there anybody else that want to come? Anybody else that want to come? Hallelujah. Oh, we thank you, God. Father, we thank you today. All heads of our lives are closed. Father, in the name of Jesus, you see each and every one of these souls that stands here before you today. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we ask now that you would touch them, God, from the crown of their heads to the sole of their feet. God, first and foremost, we thank you for your word that has been released in this place today. And God, we thank you, God, because they step out 
on faith. Father, they didn't just hear that word today, God, but they believe that now, God, in the name of Jesus, we ask that, God, that we proclaim your salvation in the name of Jesus. God, we pray today, God, that as they would live, that they live their God, this life, this walk. God, that salvation, the God, the salvation plan that you have extended to man. In the name of Jesus, God will be a part of their life, not just for today. God, but that they will stand saved today, that they will stand saved tomorrow. God, that they will be saved next week. They will be saved next month. God, they will be saved for the remainder of their lives. Father, we invoke now and we invite the presence of your Holy Spirit, God, into their lives right now, dear God. Father, that they would live abundantly on this earth, dear God, and eternally in the heavens. Father, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, that came there, God, and did it all for us on the cross of Calvary. Father, the blood that was shed, their God, that was shed for each and every one of us, God, that they will come, their God, under the plan of your blood, under the plan of salvation, that your blood, their God, that never loses its power, would be applied to their lives. Father, we pray for each and every one of them here now today in the name of Jesus that they will stand stand as children of your kingdom that God that they will stand wherever they go in the name of Jesus their God as children of light Father we thank you for it we thank you for your salvation plan today their God in the name of Jesus we thank you and release we release each and every one of them their God to you as your children as children of light that they will walk according to your word they will walk their God according to your principles. Their God, that they are now children of the kingdom. Father, we proclaim it today in the name of Jesus. That they are now children of your kingdom. And we say, let it be today. In Jesus' name. And everybody says, Amen. And Amen. Thank you very much. And and, and we're going to ask you today as you, as you, as you make this step, as you decide to make Jesus the Lord and Savior of your life, that you would stand. Don't, don't, man, don't mind what nobody say to you. You are now saved. You are saved. You are a child of the King. You are a child of God. And you will stand according to God's principle. And, and we're not asking if, you're not, if you don't belong to a Bible teaching church, then, then of course, Life Worship Center is open to you. And you are welcome here. But if you're not a part of it, this is not your choice, then find yourself a Bible teaching church and get in the word of God, read God's word, get to understand God's word, and accept God's word for what it is. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. Love on them life. Come on, let's love on them. Let's love on them today. Let's love on them today. Come on, let's love on them. And we call them saved in Jesus' name. We call them saved. Now, we thank you. We thank you for, for being here today. And if you're visiting with us for the first time, okay, yes, we're gonna do this. We're gonna do offering. You know, um, Pastor said something in the Word today that, that that caught my attention and resonated with me. And I I I am I am of the opinion that when we commit our ways and our lives and everything about us to God, that God does some things. In His Word, He declares that. And especially in, in particular, I, I, I don't even like to quote it, Malachi 3 and 10. Um, he says that you try me and you see if you live according to my principle, do the things that I ask, give freely, give off what you have, give, uh, return your tithes back to him. He says, watch and see if I don't list heaven. That's my word. I will list heaven. I will pour you out a blessing that you will not have room enough to, to hold it. You, you will have so much, it will be in such an abundance that you wouldn't know what to do with it. So what we're going to ask you today now to do is to stand. Let us all stand, please. We're going to stand. Those of us that are returning our tithes to God, and of course we know that our tithes is a 10% of our salary that, that, that we work and we, we get, and then we give return 10 of it back to God. The night he belongs to us, and we pay our offering. Again, we give God freely our offering 
as, as we see or as God allows us to give. So we're going to ask our ushers to come now and they're going to direct you. They're going to direct you. But if you have that tithe, if you have that offering, we can ask you to raise it. We can ask you to raise it. You know, in our church, we, we don't, we don't, we don't, we're not afraid of, 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 of showing what we get if it's a dollar, if it's five cents, if it's ten cents. We, we raise it and we, we ask God and we thank God for it. So take that offering in your hand, you hold it up before God, don't be ashamed. Just hold the offering up, whatever it is, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, as we give today, we ask, dear God, that you will allow us, dear God, to be increased. That not for the financial labor of our lives, dear God, that we will see increase, that we will be blessed, that our families will be blessed, those that are near, those that are far. And all that we do, God, and all of our endeavors, we ask and we seek, dear God, financial blessing and release from you. Father, now as we are about to give, we pray for each and every one that gave today, God, even the children, those that don't have something to give today, to God, as, they, as well, they hold their hands up in the name of Jesus, God, and we thank you for all that's going to be given, that will be used for your honor and for the furtherance of your kingdom on this earth. In Jesus' name, amen. You'll come as the... As the... Just, come, just come, please, just come, because they, they, they're not there to authorize you, so just come and, and, and give. John, good to see you, man. Good to see you, bro. Members, followers, new streamers, and visitors. We are so elated to have you join us at Life Worship Center. And if this is your first time visiting with us, from Pastor Denzel, Robin, and all of us, we thank you so much for choosing life. And we look forward to seeing you again real soon. This week at Life is filled with exciting events that I know you'll want to be a part of. So on that note, here are this week's announcements and upcoming events. On Tuesday evening, we welcome you to be a part of the experience. At 6.45, we begin with personal prayer and devotion. And at 7.15, the experience kicks off with a time of powerful praise and worship, followed by the Word of God. We are looking forward to seeing all of you back here for this time of impartation. On Thursday afternoon, we encourage all to please make an effort to join us for our midday prayer service. The presence of God has definitely met us here every time, so you do not want to miss this. Also on Thursday at 7 p.m., Operation Search and Rescue returns to the streets. So please stay tuned immediately after these announcements for further details regarding time and location. On Friday, all roads would lead to Rama International Church off of Prince Charles Drive, just east of Fox Hill, where our pastor will be speaking at their church's anniversary. Let us all make a special effort to be in attendance to support our pastor. The service begins at 7.30 p.m. In other announcements, we ask that you mark your calendars for two nights of a life experience. Beginning on Thursday night at 7.30 p.m., we will begin with a night of life and healing. Coming to join us for this occasion is Pastor Edward Kirkpatrick from Abundant Life Church in Greensboro, North Carolina. Let us come believing God for an even greater release of the supernatural. Join the leaders and members of Life Worship Center as we endeavor to spread the knowledge of the glory of God throughout our nation. We call upon all of God's soldiers to join us in a night of prayer, worship, and the word under the theme, Fanning the Flame. The service will begin on Friday, November 14th at 9 p.m. Our speakers are Apostle Valentino Williams, Ambassador Devin Roll, Pastor Edward Kirkpatrick, and our very own Pastor Denzel Roll. That's Friday, November 14th at 9 p.m. at Life Worship Center. Long's Plaza, Palmdale. See you there.
happy birthday goes out to Princess who's celebrating today and to everyone celebrating this week. From all of us at Life, we wish you a happy, happy birthday, and we hope we live to see you live many, many more. This brings us to the end of our announcements, and in case you missed anything, we want to encourage you to visit our Facebook page, or you can call the church's office Monday through Friday at 601-5125 for these or any other announcements. Also, do not forget to tune in every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 11 a.m. on Glory 93.9 for our radio broadcast entitled The Life. So from all of us here in the media department, we pray that you have a safe and life-filled week. And remember to live in love, operate in integrity, walk by faith, knowing we have been empowered. Come on, give it up, life. Give it up. Give it up, life. Give it up. Now, if you're visiting with us for the first time, if you're here in this sanctuary for the first time, you've never been here before, this is your first time in this place, I would like for you to please stand so we can recognize you, tell us who you are, what church you're from. Stand for me, please. Come on, live. Come on, live. Come on, live. Wow. Just briefly, tell us who you are, who invited you, and what church you're from. Bob Johnson, uh, I'm Heritage of the Baptist Church, and I was invited by Billy. Billy, Billy you have to cheer. Like, right? Let's get, and, and my daughter. And you, and Levi, you've got your wife and your daughter from Heritage Baptist. Come give Levi and his family a hand, please. Come on, life. Amen. My dear God bless you. church at this time and Miss Rita Rita. So I thank you. God bless you. And you, you know, you don't have a church and, and, and life is, this, these doors are always open. We have, we have a family here. Welcome to Life Worship Center. Life, give us a pound of applause, please. Yeah. And this group of people, well, before I get to them, Princess, let's, let's hold on. We can see how people Ram, can you please tell us who you are? Who invited you? My name is Ardice Brennan. I was invited by Mother Saul. And my church home is First Baptist Church. Thank you, my, name, my name is Devon Green. I'm from Sheila Fleet. That's all. I'm my mommy. You with your mommy? <laughs> this is God bless you, man. And thanks very much for being a part of Life Worship Center today. Amen. Thank you very much. And, and Princess, you have a whole crew of people over here with you. Can, they, I'm going to ask you to just introduce them and tell us who they are. And, and Good morning. Um, visiting with me today is Ingrid Jones. She's a very good friend of mine. Um, the students are from the Anchor Club of CC Sweeting Senior, of which I'm an advisor. And I'm sorry, this is Natalia. She's also visiting today. Um, the students from CC Sweeting Senior Anchor Club, again, where I'm the advisor, and along with them is Mr. Jason Haley, who is the head advisor. And then we have my sister Patrice, my nephew Brian, my brother Samuel, in the back is my friend Lee Wood, my sister Chenae, and this handsome gentleman that I've sat next to all morning is my father, John. To so John Delaro, that's my friend. Give it up for him, please. John Delaro. Amen. And today is Princess's birthday. And, and Life Worship Center, come on, let's give it up for Princess. Uh, let's go. Let, let's give out, let's, let's give out, let our voices. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Princess. Happy birthday to you. Hip, hip, hip. From Life Worship Center, girl. We love you. Amen. Amen. And thank God for all of you today. Um, you know, I, I want to I just ask, and, and I think um, anybody here in this audience today, that, that message that Pastor shared today, that something in particular resonated with you. Anything you can recall that resonated with you? If I look on your face and I think it's something that resonated with you, I'm going to give you the mic. Is there anything in particular about that message that resonated with you? That you recall that was 
You know, it, it just stood out. I know something stood out to me. What did that message resonate with you, sir? Uh, uh, the message was a blessing. Uh, what resonated with me to, this morning was that you have friends in your life that mean you well, and you have friends in your life that don't mean you well. So you gotta seek the face of God and ask for His direct part and guidance to seek out who who mean you well and who don't. So that's what resonated. It's beautiful. That, that's beautiful. That's that is beautiful, right? And I think that resonated with me also because that was at the end of the message. <laughs> hey there, everyone. Uh, what got to me in the message was when he said, "You don't be around people you don't trust leading you." You know, and also be friendly to everyone, but don't befriend everyone. You know? Wow, beautiful. And those are some of the things that resonate with some of us. John, I was going to ask you, but I, I can let you. I, I, I can let it pass. And, and 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 beautiful. You know, one of the things that resonated with me um, was when he talked about process. How how is important for Adam gave God gave to Adam a helpmate. He gave to Adam a helpmate. The Bible declares something proper. And he gave to Adam a woman. And don't care how you dress it. God decided the proper thing for a man was a woman. And and somebody said, you know where a man best friend is a dog. You know, and then you, you try dog, but then dogs really only can go so far. And and then and then um, politically in some countries they're saying that it's okay because a man is saying that their soulmate is another man. Some women are saying that their soulmate is another woman. But God says the best and proper thing for a man is another woman. Nothing else. Some people say, oh, my children, God didn't say that. The proper thing for, and that's one of the things that resonated with me that he said this morning, that little piece he said at the end. Amen. Let us stand to our feet. We're going to go home. We're not going to be any longer. We're going to go home. All heads are bowed. All eyes are closed. I'm going to ask Debbie to just come and close us out. But before we close out, let me say this. Let me encourage you today. Before we close it, that Tuesday night coming, Pastor has a word that he's going to release in his house. And we're going to encourage all of you to be here for next week, Tuesday night. Sorry, Tuesday coming. Yeah, Tuesday, Tuesday coming. Tuesday night is, is going to be a, a, a word that's going to be released in his house. And we can ask all of you to please come out and be a part of what God is going to do on Tuesday night. On Wednesday night, gentlemen, uh, two, two Wednesdays ago, we had Pastor... Pastor Otto was here with us, and he, he, he released something profound in here for men. And I think men, we can't afford not to be a part of what's happening here with the men. On this Wednesday night coming, Pastor Otto is going to come back, and he's going to complete what he started with us on Wednesday night. So let's be here for Wednesday night. On Friday night, we heard the announcement, Pastor is going to be at Rima. That's on Fox Hill Road. He's going to be preaching there on Friday night at 7.30. So for the, you know, when, when he goes, like he always says to us, he, he, he's empowered when he sees us. You know, when he can see our people there with him, standing with him, he's empowered. So let us all do our endeavor to be with him at Rhema on Fox Hill Road. When, after passing the light at Fox Hill Road in Prince Charles, is that church on the left-hand side. Bahamas Harvest is on the, on the left, sorry, on the left, if you're going east, is Bahama Harvest. Rhema is on the right-hand side. That's correct, right? So Raymond, on Prince Charles Drive. Bahamas Harvest is on the left, and Raymond's on the right-hand side. Pastor's going to be preaching there at 7.30 on Friday night, and then next week, Thursday and Friday, fanning the flame here at our church. We have some ministers coming in, Pastor Kirkpatrick, those are coming in, so we want to be here for that word and for to be a part of all the exciting things that God is going to be doing next week Thursday and Friday at our church alright so let's be reminded of those things and those events Tuesday night Wednesday night Friday night next week Thursday all eyes are bowed all eyes are closed daddy let us let us pray Heavenly Father we thank you for this day thank you Lord for your word thank you Father for everything that was imparted here 
as we go, we pray for your blessing, your protection, your provision, and we pray that we are able to go out and be a blessing to anybody, we come, everybody we come in contact with. We give you praise, glory, and honor, and we thank you for another time to come back again in Jesus' name. Amen. You be dismissed. Songs. 